Hey Church, we're continuing on our series of Wisdom for Life and looking at Proverbs. And today's topic is Word or Using Your Tongue. And the Bible is very clear and actually it's very, um, very cautious about how we use our tongue. And we're going to look at some of the verses, uh, majority from Proverbs, but there are some others that I want to share with you as well. And um, you're probably wondering why I'm still in my work uniform. Well, uh, there's a couple of reasons. One, we're recording recording during the week, and so haven't really had time to change. But the second thing is I wanted to stay in my uniform because of the bright colours. And then you can see uh, I wear these colours People from around can see quite clearly, you know, oh, this guy's working here. Uh, high vis, it, it reflects in the light uh, it, when the light is reflected. And it's interesting because um, today I was, I was actually walking across a pedestrian crossing. And, you know, I looked to the left and looked to the right, you know, and it seemed safe enough to cross. So I started to cross and then all of a sudden a car zooms around the corner and I felt like he was going to hit me. It was pretty close. It was actually pretty scary. And I thought, I'm in bright orange. How could you not see me? As well as seeing the signs for the pedestrian crossing. Now, I don't know about you, but definitely for me, and I'm sure for the majority of us, when we approach the crossing as we're driving, we slow down and have a look at our surroundings. We don't just approach it full full pelt. We slow down, we have a look, and if people are around or people are about to cross, we stop. And that's what the signs tell us to do. That's what the law tells us to do. And it's, it's safe for everybody to do that. Whereas this guy today felt like maybe he was distracted, whatever it might be. Um, he put my life at risk and and possibly others as well. So as we approach this topic, the word and using our tongue, we have to approach it like we're coming up to this crossing. We've got to slow down, have a look, and if it's, if it's clear to proceed, then yeah, we speak and we say something. But there's also got to be moments when we, when we stop and we stop ourselves from saying something we shouldn't. The Bible's very clear. We're going to get straight into it. But I thought that analogy was pretty interesting that it happened today on the day that I'm sharing um, with you guys today. I wanted to start, and we are looking at Proverbs. That's what we've been looking at. But I wanted to start with um, a couple of verses from James. So the first one is James 1, 26. And it says this, If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. I thought, whoa, that's straight off the bat, straight in your face, that if we're not controlling our tongues, but we're representing God, then it's almost like our religion is, is worthless. It doesn't quite add up. So I thought this straight away, I want to give us these strong warnings about how we use our tongue. James continues that conversation a little bit later in chapter 3. And I'm going to start from verse 2. And you've probably heard this before, but this is, for me, this really sets us up for looking at Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 2. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong, even though, sorry, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is small. It's a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. If you can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Goes on to say, you know, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is, it is, 
It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out of fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Bit of a mouthful there, but we kind of get, I love the analogies there, you know, especially with the horse. You, you put the bit in the mouth and when you want to control the horse, you know, obviously you, you turn the you turn the horse by the little, I, I think I read somewhere that's really sensitive in that horse's mouth. So it, it moves. It's happy to move in that direction that you're you're guiding it and pulling it. But if you were just to tell a horse to, to come over and let me ride you and let's go this way, horse, let's go that way, horse, it wouldn't work. And so it's kind of similar. It really sets us up to, to give us this strong warning of the tongue is almost a lethal weapon in some ways it's like a fire it's like uh, a little rudder that can that can you know maneuver this big ship you know what i'm saying so that the bible gives us this really clear warning about our tongues have to be um controlled and what we're going to do now is we are going to have a look at proverbs um one of the main problems that really come to mind to set us up to look at some of the other stuff that we're going to look at today, particularly about words and how we use our tongue and, and stuff like that, is Proverbs 18, verse 21. And you may have heard this before, especially in our Bible readings that we've been doing. It says this, Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. I'll read that again. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the, the consequences. Straight away, when you talk about life and death, and, and I think we know this in our own lives, that especially if we say speaking real words of encouragement and of love to people, it can really bring them to life. It can really energize them it can really you can see the impact that that has in the same way we can see the impact of our negativity of our hatred of our of the it, just the language that we use to put people down can be devastating and we only have to see that in our society as well um suicide rates and, and things like that we've got to be so careful about what we say and as christians uh, we have to be even more aware of the fact that we want to be giving life with our words and our tongue. We want to be sharing God with our tongues and our mouths. So that, I felt, really set us up for what we're looking at in, in Proverbs. Now, there's heaps of Proverbs, and I'm going to go through some of them quickly to continue on this warning, because I'm in bright orange, I'm warning you. Because I think we've got to take this seriously as Christians. And um, yeah, I love how James set it up. If our religion is almost worthless, if we're not living it out and we're not preaching it and we're not telling people and living it out by what we say and do. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, um, I guess, warning signs I'm putting out there for us. And the Bible tells us to say, stay away from these things. So as we're approaching the crossing, there's there's a warning. There's someone crossing, so we've got to stop and pay attention. And the first one is babbling fool. Now, I'm not calling you babbling fool, but we don't want to be babbling fools. See, Proverbs 29, 20 says this. There is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. Now, we know that in our own life. Sometimes we just shoot at the mouth. Don't doesn't go through any filter, just comes straight out. And more, more often than not, that causes issues. It causes problems. It causes relationship breakdowns, whatever it might be. 
Okay, so we don't want to be a babbling fool. There's another one in Proverbs 10, 8. The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their face. That's not me, that's the Bible. And it's interesting that um, it gives us that contrast between wise and foolish. So the wise are happy to take instruction. And I know in my life, when we're in, a, I guess, this humble state, and people are teaching us or showing us, um, you know, ways to do it. Or something like, oh, no, I know how to do it. Oh, no. And then we, we stuff it up. So we've got to be um, a, be teachable. And we can't sort of try and speak over people. We don't want babbling fools. Okay? Because the Bible says they're going to fall on our face. Number two I want to look at is boasting and mocking. And sort of put these two together. Proverbs eleven twelve says, It is foolish to belittle one's neighbour. A sensible person keeps quiet. Now, there are other verses that talk about, you know, mocking and, and, and boasting. And actually, a lot of the Bible talks, you know, with, about boasting. But I thought that was really cool. Uh, it is foolish to be belittle a neighbour. You know, a neighbour can be anybody, anyone that we come in contact with. We don't want to be belittling putting ourselves above them and mocking them or whatever it might be. Um, sometimes, like I said, sometimes when we come to the crossing, sometimes it's just it's just important just to stop, have a look. Sometimes with our mouth, it is better just to keep it quiet and and then think about what, what needs to be said, if anything. Okay? So we're not, as Christians, we're not here to boast. We're not here to mock. We're here to build up and encourage. The other one is pledges. Now, I didn't really know a lot about this one, but um, there are a number of verses in Proverbs particularly that talk about kind of, um, for me, the best way to put it is making bad deals. You know what I mean? So Proverbs eleven fifteen says, There's danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. It's safer not to guarantee another person's debt. Now, another way, of, I think, for me looking at it, it's almost like the get rich Quick schemes. Sometimes we, we we're really quick to yes, I'll do. I'll be in that. I'll be in that. And there's not a lot of thought process. There's not a lot of research that goes into it. It's it's a lot of um almost that. Oh yes, I I want I want that. I want that. I want that. And so, as I said, I didn't really realize a lot about that until I read some of the verses, particularly talk about you know investing in things we don't know about. And so. Uh, the Bible is warning us to when we put our word, obviously you put your word in, you put your money in. Same deal. When we are investing in people's lives, um, we're investing and it comes from our words and our, our promises and our pledges. So we've got to be we've got to be true to our word, but we also don't want to be making rash decisions. We don't want to be making foolish decisions or foolish investments. See what the Bible's teaching us wisdom. In this, the next one is corrupt speech, and I'm going to read this because I love this um, analogy because it, it gives me this extra warning, even though I'm wearing bright orange. This extra warning about our tongues and how we use our words. So, Proverbs six, twelve to nineteen, and again, you might have read this during the week, um, but I'm going to start. At verse 12, chapter 6, verse 12. What are worthless and wicked people like? They are constant liars, signaling their deceit with a wink of an eye, a nudge of the foot, or the wiggle of fingers. Their perverted hearts plot evil, and they consistently stir up trouble. But they will be destroyed suddenly, broken in an instant beyond all hope and healing. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Haunty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. Um, I like that kind of bit where it says the six, actually, no, there's seven things that the Lord hates. 
And if I want to use, say, um, um, my, my body, for instance, let's have a look at how many of these seven things do with your mouth or your tongue, okay? Haunty eyes, okay, no. Lying tongue, yes. So that's one. Hands that kill the innocent, okay? That's not the tongue. A heart that plots evil, no. Feet that race, race to do wrong, no. That's the feet. A false witness who pours out lies, yes. A person who sows discord in a family, yes. So three out of seven of the things that the Lord hates is to do with our mouths and what we say. Okay, so lying. We've got lying, false witness, and discord, causing trouble. So for me, this is, a, again, a strong warning. If the Lord hates it, then we need to stay away from it. Okay, so that corrupt speech, and that leads us again into the next one. So we've had both, uh, we've had the babbling fool. I hope you don't think that of me. The boasting and mocking, the pledges, corrupt speech, and now we're looking at lies. And that one, again, talks about lies. So I could even use that one. But I wanted to use Proverbs 12, 22. On the back of this, it says, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. So I wanted to give that comparison because the Lord, okay, he hates lies. We get that. But we also know that he loves us when we tell the truth. And as Christians, that's what we want to do. That's what we're striving for, is to tell the truth, to be honest with our lips and our mouth. The next one we're going to stay away from and warning you is gossip and slander. Now, people might think, oh, gossip and slander. Like People always like to hear a bit of gossip. They like to know what's going on. But we need to be very, very careful. I'm warning you to be careful because the Bible and Proverbs is teaching us wisdom to stay away from that. Um, there are a number of verses, but I'm just going to pull out one. It says Proverbs 16, 28. A trouble... A trouble plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. So that's Proverbs 16, verse 28. Sorry, a troublemaker plants seeds of strife. I've left out a word. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. And I don't know about you, but we do hear about when gossip or, or, or not even being trustworthy with, with what we've been told. And that can cause a lot of strife amongst the best of friends, through families, through churches, whatever it might be. You know, gossip, slander, you know, putting people down, that sort of stuff. Uh, it, there's no place in it in our lives. And... Oh, we know social media and, and, and TV and all that sort of stuff. Love it because it's it's entertaining and it's it's kind of people don't mind watching, you know, people in arguments and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's entertaining. But reality is in the real life, in our own lives as Christians, we want to stay away from that. We don't want to be sowing seeds of, of you know, of trouble. We actually want to be planting good fruit we want to be showing the fruits of the spirit and the last one we're looking at is quarrels and and one verse that again there are a few but proverbs 20 verse 3 avoiding a fight is a mark of honor only fools insist on quarreling i hate quarreling i i actually avoid it you know people say oh you avoid conflict yes i do but reality is, um, we don't want to be the people that are starting fights, quarrelling, um, making mischief or trouble for other people for our own entertainment or for our own like sinful nature. We we want to be, as I said before, these are these warning signs because the opposite of that is about building each other up. And we hear a lot of sermons and a lot of the New Testament, particularly Jesus teaching, um, tells us about loving one another. And, and, and I guess I've taken the warning kind of perspective today is to stay away from these things because they're, they're actually foolish. They're not wise. 
So make wise decisions with our tongues. And just to finish, I wanted to see what Jesus says about this because, um, you know, he, he was getting in trouble left, right and centre, particularly with the Pharisees about the things that he was saying. It was going against what they had set up, what they believed in. And so in Matthew 12, verses 33 to 37, um, just gives us this point of view of what Jesus is saying. Okay, it goes over two pages in my Bible. Let's start at verse 33. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You broad of snakes. Sorry, you brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from a treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you, acquit you or condemn you. Wow, that's powerful. Like every word that I've said, I'm, I'm accountable for. Um, and 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 God is, is is almost you know taking note of everything that I say. Man, that is that is the biggest warning that we need. If Jesus is saying that that we are accountable for what we say, and we know that we know that in life, we know that through experience. But this is again another biblical warning for us, a teaching for us. But I tell you what, I love the imagery before that about the tree. Because I remember um, a number of weeks ago at church, actually well, probably a couple of months now, I brought in an orange, not quite as bright as this, but I brought in an orange which was picked from the tree at the church. And I remember saying to the church, I can't remember what sort of tree it was. Was it a lime tree, a lemon tree? Or, I, I couldn't remember. But it wasn't until I could actually see the fruit that I knew, ah, it's an orange tree. And I, I picked the orange and I brought it into church and I said, well, hey, you know, look at this. And I actually used this, this verse to illustrate, hey, we want to be producing good fruit as, as a church, as humans, as individuals as well, as families. We want to be producing good fruit. But see what, say, what God, Jesus is saying here is actually our tongue, our tongue, like we said in James, it can't really be tamed like a wild animal. We, we can tame wild animals, but we can't tame the tongue. But what we can control is our hearts, what we put in it. And our heart is almost this filter for our tongue. Now, if our hearts are good, we will produce good. If our hearts are bad, we will produce bad. Same like a tree. If a tree is gone off, the fruit's going to be off. And we don't want to be off. We actually want to be producing good fruit. You see what I'm saying here? Our words, our words are not only um, recorded, not only can br bring death, but they can bring life and nourishment and encouragement. And the spirit of God can live out through our words. I don't know about you, but I really need to be shaped by the Bible so that my words and my heart are biblical. And often when I'm not reading the word or I'm not praying or I'm not spending time with other Christians or whatever, then my words tend to reflect that. And my encouragement to you, wherever you're at in, in life or if you're watching this and you're struggling, get back in the word, read some of these Proverbs and, and, and be enriched in, in learning more about living a wise life. Because the Bible warns us, like this orange, warning us, you know, let, let's be, let's approach this slow and steady like we're coming up the crossing. We don't want to run anyone over. 
okay? Especially with our mouths. We don't want to tear anyone down because this is a powerful tool. The Bible tells us it is a powerful tool. And so we've got to use it. You know that you know the line with great power comes great responsibility? Hey, we all got that. We all got that responsibility to to produce good fruit. And that comes from here. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for the opportunity to to learn more about um, Proverbs and what it says about our tongues and our words and, and how we use that. Lord, help us to be um, cautious with what it, what we say. Help us to be um, uh, life-giving with our words. Help us to be an encouragement. And Lord, help our hearts to be focused on you so that our tongues can be tamed. Our tongues can be under control because our hearts are good. And Lord, if people are struggling, they're listening to this and they're struggling, Lord, I just pray for them right now. I ask that the Holy Spirit come into their hearts. I pray the Holy Spirit direct them and guide them and put people around them who are going to love and support them. And Lord, help us to always build up each other up. As your Bible clearly says and tells us and teaches us to do that. Your Bible also says for us to love one another as we love ourselves. And Lord, help us to do that with everything that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.